Crackberry.com. Hey everybody, Blaze here for Crackberry.com, and as I fully expect you to know as a Crackberry reader, 10.3 has leaked out for the BlackBerry Z10. Now I've loaded it up on my device here, and what we're gonna do is actually go ahead and give you guys a quick little comparison to 10.2.1. Um, the reason for the comparison is because it's, obviously it's new, we wanna show you what's new, but the operating system, I really can't recommend it to actually load it up on your daily device. You don't wanna use this on your everyday device because it's not complete, it's not really stable, and you know some of the things that are in it are subject to change and uh, what we're seeing here is of course not exactly a final build so if you actually want to see what changes are in the operating system without actually loading it up then this is the video for you uh, what we're going to do is actually just start with the blackberry hub here and um, as you can see the blackberry hub has a little bit of a change it's a little bit lighter at the bottom versus on 10.2.1 where you know, you have the black bar at the bottom. This one has a white one, but the cool thing is when you actually scroll, the bar disappears now, offering you a little bit of a further look at what emails and messages that you have in there. Uh, the other thing is the sidebar, the overflow menu. Uh, the position has changed a little bit. As you can see on 10.2.1, it's sort of in the middle of the device. On 10.3, they've lowered it down a little bit to make it a little bit easier for access. Uh, the other thing that you'll automatically notice is the keyboard is a little bit different on 10.3. Um, this time around they have red accents on there now. It's hard to say whether or not that will actually you know, make it into production as it does seem to clash a little bit with the blue that we're all familiar with on 10.2.1 but that's what's there now. And cancel that and some of the other changes let's jump into the camera itself because the camera has gotten a little bit of a revamp <clears throat> so when it comes to the camera you can actually now just tap on the screen to take a picture it will automatically focus take the picture now previously you had to actually go into video mode in order to take a video, but that's not the case any longer. You can actually just tap on this button and it will start recording video from there. Tap on it again and your recording has stopped. Now, as you saw in the menu system, there are some few other options as well. You have the usual switch camera if you want to take some selfies or something. You have the usual mode adjustments as well. And previously you could add, change the aspect ratio, which is still there, and you still have the HDR mode and everything like that, stabilization, but you'll see the new timer mode. Um, so if you wanna take pictures with your family or anything like that, that device is greasy. Look at that, let me clean that up for y'all. Anyways. So you have a timer mode, so if you wanna take pictures with family or anything like that, you can do so, you know, time your selfies if that's what you're really into. Um, also with the video, you can take 1080p video, 720p video, and 720p video at 60, 60 frames per second. So that's a little bit of a change. Of course, uh, time shift is still there. I haven't noticed any real changes within time shift, but you can see that everything is a little bit more accessible. Um, you can actually change the burst mode as well, which is all fine. And when it comes to other additions, you have now Panorama, which is actually really, really cool in how they did it. So obviously we're not gonna get much of a Panorama here, but I just wanna show you guys exactly how they implement it. So if you tap on it, you start. Hopefully it'll start again, buggy OS. But anyways, so you see those squares on there. You have to line up those squares and then you get a panorama. And if you don't actually match up those squares, then it won't actually take the picture, which is really, really cool. It's a really good implementation of it. I tested it outside and it worked really, really well. I was kind of surprised by how well it actually worked on there. So that's really cool. Um, 
So that's the camera, but what about the photo album? The photo album and organization, all of that stuff. Um, has a little bit of a revamp as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you open up your photo album, you no longer have all that stuff at the bottom. You know, the album and everything like that. The pictures um, compare it to 10.2.1. So all of that stuff is gone, so you can actually just tap on that, go in there, and then you can view your pictures from there. It has all the regular settings and stuff like that. Tap on the screen, get your menu back. But it also has a slideshow and everything like that. It also has something which is called automatic stories. Automatic stories offers you the ability to go ahead and use any recent pictures as a story maker video, it will automatically just go ahead and create them based on the uh, maximum number of photos that you have in there. So if you're out at a family event and you take 50 p photos of your family, it automatically goes ahead and creates a story maker video for that and then it stops. So that's pretty cool. Not sure how, you know, how often I would actually use it anything like that but it's cool that it's there and it can be disabled um, you can also add favorite photos as you see I have a favorite photo of Tom Baker here if I want to unfavorite that video uh, remove from favorites then disappears um, the music player also has a little bit of a revamp so you can see it has the shuffle button down here if we go into an album you can go ahead and tap on it if you scroll down. Again, the buttons sort of disappear at the bottom. Um, I'm trying to find a song that won't get me in trouble. So if I tap on that, you can see it starts to play. If I tap on that, it goes to the album itself. And the button is highlighted with the accent there. And you can swipe down to access any of the other songs in the album. There's not a whole lot different in there, but you can set it as a ringtone, you can um, save it as a playlist, you can edit the order of the songs that are playing. Again, still no equalizer or anything like that, but it is getting better. It's getting better to the point where it's actually, you know, not too basic and you have a little bit more functionality in there. Uh, the other thing is when it comes to uh, the settings. <laughs> settings have advanced interaction now. Keep in mind, not a complete OS. This doesn't actually work. But you have advanced interactions, which uh, you can lift the device to wake it. Even though it's on, again, it doesn't work. So picking up the sleeping device from a flat surface will cause the screen to turn on automatically. If you want to go ahead and save battery life, you can flip it face down. It will supposedly save some battery life there. It doesn't work at this point, at least not as far as I can tell, but it's definitely something that they're working on. Um, mainly everything in here is pretty much just visual. I haven't really noticed too many drastic changes within the settings. Everything is still pretty much normal. And the clock has a little bit of a revamp as well. Again, with the blue, or sorry, the orange accents, red accents, whatever you want to call it. All the clocks are combined now, so you have the world clock. Tap on that. Opens up the weather and such. You go into the stopwatch. You can start it, stop it, reset it. You have your timer. Set for five minutes, let it roll. And the browser. The browser has, well, the browser hasn't really drastically changed, but there are some changes in there. So if I tap on that, it'll load it up. But you see, it gives you the, the green bar down at the bottom. Um, 
don't know if you guys can actually see that on camera. So that's basically the browser. All of the settings remain the same. It's just a little bit darker, a little bit more organized. Um, you can even still have your history through the swipe up on the tab at the bottom. So that's interesting. The weather app has changed a little bit as well. Nothing drastic, but it does seem a little bit quicker. You can add cities and stuff like that directly on the side now. Um, the intelligent assistant is something interesting too. Now this is one of those things that we saw early on with the voice control and it never actually really worked. But later on the voice control started to work really good. Um, but it's the same scenario again. It's kind of like your quick action section but if you actually tap on this Search the internet for crackberry.com. Super slow at this point. Searching the internet for crackberry.com. So it opens up the web browser and shows you what you search for. Now the problem is, is that again, it doesn't fully work. So if I send a text message, sorry, I didn't get that. What do you want to do? See, it has no idea what I wanted to do at that point, but work in progress as they say. Uh, so that's a quick look at BlackBerry 10.3. If you guys have any questions, go ahead, drop them in the comments below. I'll try and answer them, but uh, most definitely hit up the CrackBerry forums because everybody has been going through it already. So there's lots of information already available if you want to see what else has changed. That's it. Blaze out.